Grounding is a principle of electricity that sometimes puzzles homeowners. Grounding offers the most effective, and safest route for unintentional stray current back to the ground by way of an electrical panel. This is my second and final video on the subject. The newest addition to wiring was introduced around 1965. This form of NMD cable was an update to the older NM cable, incorporating the use of a bare copper grounding wire, that joined the insulated hot, and neutral wires, contained within the sheathing. Instead of rubberized sheathing, modern NMD cable uses a very tough, and durable vinyl sheathing. This update made the cable inexpensive, and very easy to install. It is a very flexible product, and is used extensively in virtually every new home built. Along with NMD cable for interior use, a related type of cable was also developed for underground use. Underground feeder wire, can be buried directly under the ground without the need for a protecting conduit. This type of wire has a hot, a neutral, and a ground wire embedded in a solid plastic vinyl sheath that protects it from moisture. This offers an inexpensive method for running power underground to outbuildings and yard lights. Through most of the history of residential electrical service. The preferred metal used in the conducting wires has been copper, known as the best conductor of electrical current. In the mid-1960s, when copper prices were quite high, aluminum came into vogue, as a material for electrical wiring. Residential installations between 1965 and 1974, sometimes used wires that were solid aluminum, or aluminum covered with a thin layer of copper. Aluminum, or copper-coated aluminum wiring is perfectly safe, if connected to receptacles, switches, and other devices, rated for use with aluminum, but it can pose problems, when it's installed with devices intended for use with copper wiring only, or not installed properly. Because of these issues, aluminum, or copper-clad aluminum is no longer used in residential applications. If you have aluminum wiring, repairs are best made by a professional. To prevent electrical danger, your home's electrical system includes a backup plan, a system of grounding wires that runs parallel to the hot and neutral wires. It provides an alternate pathway for electrical current to follow should there be a breakdown in the system of hot and neutral wires, that normally carry the current. If a wire connection becomes loose, for example, or a rodent gnaws through a wire, the grounding system channels the stray current back to ground by this alternate pathway, tripping the breaker, before it can cause a fire or shock. The grounding pathway is generally formed by a system of bare copper wires, that connect to every device and every metal electrical box in your home. In standard sheathed NM cable, this bare copper wire is included along with the insulated conducting wires inside the cable. The bare copper grounding wires terminate in a grounding bar in your main service panel, and that grounding bar is in turn connected to a grounding rod driven deep into the earth outside your home. This grounding system provides a path of least resistance for electricity to follow back to ground, should a break in the wiring system allow electricity to leak out of the preferred system of black and white circuit wires. In most home wiring systems, evidence of the grounding system can be seen at each outlet receptacle, where the third round slot in the face of the receptacle represents the grounding connection. When a grounded appliance plugs into such a receptacle, its round grounding prong is now directly connected to the system of bare copper grounding wires inside the house circuits. Not all homes have this elaborate and complete grounding system formed by a network of bare copper wires. While such a grounding system is standard in homes with circuit breakers that are wired with sheathed NM cable, older wiring systems installed before 1965 may be grounded through metal conduit or metal cable, not bare copper grounding wires and even older systems installed before 1940 may not have any form of grounding at all. Such is the case in knob and tube wiring, where there is no grounding path of any kind. Many older systems have already been updated, and it is a good idea to have it done if your wiring is of this older generation. One clue that your wiring is old is when the outlet receptacles have two slots rather than three. This indicates the outlets may not be grounded. A pretty typical diagram for the grounding system for a house is shown here, along with a few of the current carrying conductors commonly called live and neutral. On the far left is the transformer outside the house. And on the far right is an appliance that's plugged in. In between them is a breaker panel and a wall socket of the style found in North America. The green dashed line shows the normal path for current to flow. Notice the grounding electrodes for making an electrical connection with the earth ground. To use the U.S. National Electrical Code, NEC, 
As an example, Article 250.52 lists eight types of grounding electrodes. One very good type, is an electrode encased in concrete, such as the cold water supply, since concrete continues to draw moisture from the ground, and makes good physical contact due to its weight. You have to be careful of using metal water pipes that seemingly go into the ground, as sections of these are often replaced with non-metallic pipes during regular maintenance. Another is a grounding rod or pipe at least 8 feet long and inserted deep enough into the ground. By deep enough, we mean to include factors such as the fact that the frost line doesn't count as a good ground, since it has a high resistance. Notice also in the diagram that there are places where the various metal cases are connected to the grounding system. This is called bonding. Now, how does all this system grounding help us? Let's start with handling a fault. One purpose of the grounding system is to cause a breaker in the main panel to trip if there's a short circuit. As indicated by the fault at number 1 on the slide. That happens if there's an appliance with a metal case, and the insulation on the live wire in the appliance is damaged, causing the copper wire inside to touch the metal case. The case becomes an extension of that live wire. This is called a fault. But the metal case is connected to an electrical path consisting of the ground wire in the power cord plugged into the wall socket, as well as the wire from the wall socket to the breaker panel. These are referred to as the equipment grounding conductors. In North America at least, in the box where the service first enters the house, the equipment grounding conductors are connected, or bonded to the neutral wire. In this case that box is the main breaker panel. In most breaker panels this connection is made by having both the wires go to metal bars that are screwed, or bonded, to the panel's case, thereby making the electrical connection through the case. Following the red dashed line from the fault, a high current now runs through the live wire, through the appliance's case, and uses the equipment grounding wires as the return path to the breaker panel. From there the current goes through the panel's case to the neutral bar and neutral wire back to the transformer. Along the way, the live wire runs through a breaker. As indicated by number 2 in the breaker panel and the current is high enough to trip that, opening the circuit and making it safe again. But where does the earth ground come into it? Often it doesn't. Sometimes, however, as shown by the blue dashed line, a little current will flow through a parallel path including the grounding electrodes and the earth ground. As the title screen of this video suggests, this is video number 23 of my DIY house circuit layout and connection series. In this series, I will be covering essential topics to help you understand and manage your home's electrical system safely and efficiently. Be sure and stay tuned, as I will also, from time to time, be reviewing electrical products that in my opinion are worthy of paying attention to. One of those products is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. The EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is one of the most versatile, whole home backup solutions that has just been introduced to the market. This backup power system is designed for both, extended outages, and daily use. With an unrivaled capacity of 6 kilowatt hours, 7,200 watts output, and 5.6 kilowatts solar input, a single unit can run your entire home. With EcoFlow Smart Home Panel, you get an uninterrupted power backup experience with automatic switchover, energy consumption monitoring, and lower electricity bills. This unit is not driven by gas or diesel generation but uses the battery storage unit that is charged when the utility is available. This means that the unit can be placed indoors or outdoors and is virtually silent when operating. It has a stackable design, that can be expanded to increase output in only minutes. Compatible with various energy sources, from solar to gas, to meet your ever-changing power needs. To obtain a discount code for 5% off on all EcoFlow products and more information on this subject, and pick up your free digital copy of the Ultimate Guide to Residential Standby Generators. Simply fill out the information requested, when you go to this website, https colon, forward slash, forward slash, lowercase bit, dot ly, forward slash, 3, lowercase u, uppercase w, lowercase v, lowercase e, uppercase r, lowercase h. Before we end this video, I want to repeat the connection to my free, copy of the Ultimate Guide to Residential Standby Generators, and the 5% discount code to all EcoFlow products. Also, here is the connection to obtain a free copy of my 50-page electrical power crib sheets. And finally, here is the link to all of my electrical courses, which are located in my stand store.